The Prime Minister gives us Steve a mission to find and eliminate the Danger Beasts from before. When the Danger Beasts attack a supply van, several of them are attacked by the Jagers. The next day, Wave remembers what happened and remarks that despite Bowles' kind nature, the businessmen present were afraid of him because of how intimidating he looked but Bowles tells him that in spite of his behavior, he had murdered several people in the past, which has earned him a lot of hate from the people. To Wave's surprise, Bowles' wife and little daughter visit the Jagers to show support for his efforts, while Tatsumi instructs Suzanu and tells him that rather than seeing him as a tool, he should be seen as one of Night Raid's members. The latest task assigned to Night Raid upon arriving at their new location is to kill the Change Danger Beasts, which is basically helping the capital. Tatsumi says that the capital might save more lives if they help them, when Chelsea remarks that the Jagers should handle the situation. Later, she reveals an agenda that she thinks Tatsumi's generosity will be the death of him one day. Meanwhile, Steve and Run are talking about the Danger Beasts and how they may have been the product of one of Dr. Stylish's experiments since it's been discovered that they were previously human. The two think that someone has either released the new Danger Beasts or have found a way to escape their cells. While their master observes, Suryu and Koro defeat many Danger Beasts, realizing that he will keep messing with his toys. The next night, while patrolling the mountains, Tatsumi finds out that Lubbock joined Night Raid for his personal goals and agenda, and unexpectedly runs into Istith, while on his way to the top of a mountain by himself in search of more danger beasts. Istith is surprised at first when she sees Tatsumi, but quickly becomes overjoyed. However, their happy reunion is interrupted by Sura, a cloaked figure, who supervises the activities of the new danger beasts. Sura uses his imperial arm, Shambhala, which can teleport objects to send us Deef and Tatsumi to a faraway island where they come across a massive, altered danger beast, a result of Dr. Stylish's experiments, which his Deef struggles to defeat. Tatsumi manages to kill it, only for another gigantic danger beast to appear which his Deef swiftly defeats. Later that night, Tatsumi and S. Deef decide to share their life stories, though Tatsumi makes up his, she reveals that she comes from a lineage of danger beast hunters. Her father taught her that only the strongest survive and instructed her to live with strength after their clan was wiped out by a rival tribe. This led her to join the Imperial Army, where she rose to become a powerful general. Tatsumi asks about her Imperial Arm, which she explains is symbolized by the mark on her chest. Determined to leave the island, Estif tries to hunt a flying danger beast and when Sura's teleportation field appears, they both jump into it returning to the mountains. Tatsumi escapes using his incursio armor and realizes that Izdiv is fiercely loyal to the Empire. She wonders if he was sent elsewhere but remarks that what's happened twice can happen a third time, believing that they'll meet again. He inwardly says he has the same feeling but now knows for sure that he won't be able to convince her, which is why the next time they meet will be his enemies. Lovak asks Tatsumi about why he let Izdiv return to the mainland with him rather than abandoning her on the island but Agenda replies that she would have left the island anyway and reveals that she is intimately aware of her. Meanwhile, Wave approaches Sirio on the killing of three bandits who were apparently Night Raid members and remarks that the capital is perverted, but he's still a soldier. Night Raid learns through Magenda that the Revolutionary Army and Night Raid are going to help a peaceful religious group called the Path of Peace, which is beginning a religious rebellion as attacks against the capital by the Revolutionary Army and a tribe and alliance will occur at the same time with the Path of Peace rebellion. She gives Night Raid the task of killing Balak, who's both the Prime Minister's spy and the advisor to the creator of the Path of Peace, and is also forcing some of the religion's supporters to surrender with drugs. Magenta gives Night Raid the order to eliminate the Jagers, especially Kurom and Bowles, who will definitely reply and mind consoles Akame who starts to express her concern about facing Kurom the next day. Ezdith divides the Jagers into two groups, with Wave, Kurom, and Bowles going after Akame while Siryu and Run attack Magenta. As Wave's group approaches a chasm, Mind fires a shot at Kurom, who is able to swiftly deflect it. The Night Raid crew faces Kurom and Bowles when Suzanu shows up and knocks Wave away as Yatsu Fusa, Kurom's imperial arm, comes to life, transforming the final eight people that is attacked into puppets for her use with one of them being a massive danger beast called a Desta Ghoul. Kurom wonders how many of the imperial arm's users there will die, as Night Raid gets ready to fight the puppets Kurom has created. Bowles and Kurom start fighting Night Raid as Akam rushes forward, remarking that the strain of controlling eight bodies should dull her reactions and Kurom gets hit first by her puppet Desta Ghoul's strong blast of light. Akame starts fighting her and their former friend Natala, who has been turned into a puppet as she says she wants to always be with Natala because he was their friend. She adds that she'll add it to her collection as well so that they can be together again. Akame angrily tells her to shut up but gets thrown off and faces Bowles and the puppet bodyguard Wall while mine battles Doya, Leon battles Rokugo, Suzanu battles Destagul, and Tatsumi fights Apeman and Henter. When Kurum chops off Leon's left arm during the fight, Magenda is forced to murder Rokugo herself, 
While Bowles asks Akeem about joining the Revolutionary Army, Akeem tells him that she made the decision because she believes it's the right one killing Wall and neutralizing Bowles TU as Leon joins them. Meanwhile, Tatsumi is slowly starting to get overwhelmed by Ape Man and Henter, but a disguised Chelsea eventually helps him kill them. While mine is against Doya, Kurum sends after Kaiser Frog to swallow her, but she defeats the frog and gets away. Suzunu kills Destagol by transforming into a more powerful form with the help of Nagenda's life energy as Bowles throws Rubicon up high in a desperate effort, hoping to take advantage of the enormous blast to murder Leon and Akam. Tatsumi Mai, Nagenda, and Suzunu get caught up in the blast, with Tatsumi protecting them while trying to understand what's happening. He thinks Bowles has died in the explosion and worries about Akam's safety, before starting a search for Kurum, who escapes with Natala. As the smoke clears, Leon protects Akan with Wall's shield before losing consciousness. Bowles, injured but alive, remembers a conversation with Esdif where she questions why he never ate with her group despite cooking for them. Bowles explains that him being there was unpleasant for them to eat, prompting Esdif to remove his mask and express her disappointment. Bowles then starts joining them for meals. Coming across an injured girl, he tried to help her, but she misunderstood him for a ghost because of his mask. After reassuring her, Bowles tends to her wounds only to be fatally stabbed by Chelsea, disguised as a victim of his past. Realizing it was the day he would face justice, Bowles loses out to the poison. Chelsea, reflecting on the pain of the battles, decides to go after Kurum, with Lubbock offering support. As Mike Raid rests, Leon prepares for surgery while Lubbock informs the agenda of Chelsea's mission. Tatsumi and Akame are sent to help and Chelsea faces Kurum, poisoning her and revealing her identity before seemingly killing her. Reflecting on her past, she remembers murdering a corrupt officer and joining the Gaia Foundation to fight against corruption. However, Kurum survives due to new drugs, revealing her strength and launching a counterattack. Chelsea tries to escape, but is defeated and dies in Romilly. Tatsumi and Akame horrifyingly see Chelsea's bloodied head stabbed by spikes in shock. Tatsumi thinks about her lost friends, Sheil, Bulat, and Chelsea, regretting not spending more time with them and wondering if he could have saved them with more strength. Mine interrupts, urging him to hurry as Night Raid gets ready to attack Balak and Kiruch. In the palace, Balak, under Prime Minister Anna's protection, shows his personal guards of four Rakshasa demons to Esdiv and the Jagers. Despite not having Tegu, they show off their past victories over Tegu users. Esdiv warns them to not underestimate Night Raid and notes Balak's extreme caution. Meanwhile, Wave notices Kuro's fatigue from Chelsea's attack, feeling guilty for not being there to help Bowles as Esdiv examines Chelsea's body but Siri was allowed to feed it to Koro. Surprisingly, Kurom wakes up seemingly fine, asking to continue serving under Esdif and for refuge in a room provided by Balak, wanting to fight rather than being thrown away. She apologizes to Wei for causing worry and vows to fight to the end. Meanwhile, Tatsumi and Mine explore Kyurok, and he says they should be less alert to blend in, irritating Mine who realizes how mature he's become since Chelsea's death. Near the palace, Lubak daydreams about an agenda before being spotted by Mez and Sten, who decide to take him down. In a nearby graveyard, Akame faces Ibarra, a Rakshasa demon Akame defeats him by taking advantage of his weakness despite his speed. Mez and Sten surprise Lubak and start battling him, but his tactics help him defeat Sten and defeat Mez, but he regrets having to fight good-looking enemies. In the outskirts of the city, Mine complains about how boring the search is as Tatsuni reminisces about joining Night Raid, and they argue until being interrupted by the path of Peace Lear. At the palace, Bollock's plans are interrupted by news of the Rakshasa demon's defeat as Sirio reveals that the Jagers are Night Raid's only match, while Esdif vows to face Nagenda. Within Kyorak's palace, Wave and Suzuka watch from afar as Sirio and Koro playfully start arguing with local children. Sirio happily remarks that the children are allies of justice, but she suddenly becomes determined to protect them from the oncoming threat of evil. Meanwhile, at one of Night Raid's hidden hideouts, Nagenda tells the team about their mission, a secret operation to infiltrate the palace and eliminate Balak. Suzunu decides to provide dinner to the team while Sirio and Suzuka stand guard at the palace where he recognizes Tatsumi and Mine disguised in the crowd. They follow the Night Raid members to the outskirts of the town and accidentally draw attention from Sirio. Discovering Tatsumi's connection with Night Raid, Sirio sadly decides to eliminate him with Mine and attacks Tatsumi and Mine with a barrage of missiles and explosives. Tatsumi manages to barely escape and recognizes Sirio so Mine decides to fight her. She easily defeats defeats Koro and counters Sirius attacks before Sirius faces her directly but Mine declares that Sirius' morals are hypocritical, saying she isn't any different from the villains she says she fights and slowly starts overwhelming her. Meanwhile, Tatsubi starts struggling against Suzuka, determined to defeat him before Koro transforms but Mine calmly takes advantage of his weakness and manages to win. Magraid progresses their mission while the others Mine and Tatsumi manage to win against Sirius. In the aftermath, Mine tells Tatsumi that she wants to talk to him about something after the battle is over, inwardly remarking that she's surprised at herself since she didn't think she'd end up wanting to survive for someone else's sake. 
She tells him to promise that he'll survive no matter what which she confidently agrees to. She remarks that they'll face even harsher battles moving forward, but as long as she has these feelings, she'll be able to fight even harder than before. In the palace, Honest and his government officials watch over the revolutionary army's swift progress, causing panic before Budo steps in, promising to protect the kingdom. Honest introduces Sura and his elite unit, who confidently declare their ability to handle the situation, declaring that Budo being involved is unnecessary. Budo calmly says the oncoming threat is like a swarm of rats while at the Jaeger's residence, Wave reflects on their decreasing numbers due to casualties. Run brings food and starts discussing the revolution's status before Wave frustratingly tells the Jaegers to contribute more actively. Kurom unknowingly asks for seconds, but her collapsing from Chelsea's injury disrupts the atmosphere. Outside the palace, soldiers gather for the revolution being watched by Tatsumi and Lubak as Leon playfully teases mine about her relationship with Tatsumi underground, hearing which she suddenly becomes flustered. Meanwhile, Nagenda, Akame, and Suzanu make preparations at forest ruins for the oncoming revolution and in an alley, Tatsumi and Lubak meet a revolutionary army agent, who takes them to an apparent meeting location. However, they discover a massacre upon arriving and fall into a trap set up by Budo and Sura. Tatsumi starts battling Budo, struggling against his overwhelming strength while Lubak faces Sura, who uses his tedious teleportation powers. Lubak tries to outsmart Sura, but is stopped by an agent aligned with Sura, who betrays them, revealing her captured family. In a fit of rage, Sura kills the agent and furiously transports Lubak to an abyss, but Lubak manages to trap him with his wires and brings him as well, declaring that no one can cut these wires, not even relic wielders who can manipulate time and space. Lubak manages to stab Sura's heart and both of them are transported back to the palace. As they're hurtling through the air, Lubak Lubak tells Crosstail that they've been through a lot together and apologizes to Nagenda, remarking that this is it for him and leaving the rest to Tatsumi before getting falling on top of large spikes, shocking Tatsumi. The Prime Minister distressingly learns of Seri's death, but remarks that he at least took one of the Night Raid members with him. Bugno says they've placed the other one in the dungeon and the Prime Minister declares that they'll make an example out of him so the Revolutionary Army knows to back down. Bugno says his mean spirit would be effective in discouraging traitors before Esdith appears behind them and asks them to allow her to take take care of this, vowing to not let anyone else have him as a public execution gets announced for Tatsumi the next day. Mine attempts his solo rescue mission for Tatsumi, but Akame intervenes, insisting she can't go alone and revealing her plan to accompany Mine if she chooses to proceed, hearing which Leon decides to join them. Agenda arrives and urgently assigns Night Raid a mission to rescue Tatsumi and prevent his execution. As D faces Tatsumi in his cell after learning about his true loyalty and urges him to leave Night Raid and join the Jagers. Tatsumi refuses, declaring he won't fight for her so she breaks open in the cell, warning him to accept her offer or face death. Tatsumi chooses to die fighting for his comrades before Esdith hugs him, but he rejects her, remarking that she values war and destruction. Shocked, Esdith decides to carry out his execution herself and the remaining Jaegers learn of her intentions the next day. Wave questions the meaning of killing someone you love and Run explains that she wants to be the one to kill Tatsumi out of love. Kurom agrees, saying it's like her situation with Akam. At the public execution, Esdith gets ready to kill him, but Mine interrupts, scaring away the civilians as Nagenda, Leon, and Suzanu arrive, using explosives to separate Esdith and Tatsumi as Budo faces Leon and Mine, while Nagenda and Suzanu face Esdith. Meanwhile, Akame fights capital guards and retrieves Incursio. Suzanu struggles against Esdith, so Nagenda uses Magatama Manifestation, sacrificing herself to revive Suzanu. Despite his increased strength, Suzanu gets overwhelmed by Esdith's power and sacrifices himself to buy time for Night Raid to escape, but Esdith freezes time to gain an advantage in her battle with Suzanu, ultimately defeating him. Later, Mine fatally wounded from the battle with Budo and confesses her love for Tatsumi before kissing him and passing away. <laughs> At Night Raid's hideout, the remaining members mourn the deaths of Lubak, Suzanu, and Mine as Tatsumi questions why they saved him, and Nagenda explains that stopping the public execution prevented frightening the Revolutionary Army. She adds that eliminating Budo, a long-standing enemy, was also necessary before Leon mentions Nagenda's grief, especially for Suzanu, who fulfilled his mission. Akame remarks that the surviving members carry the emotions and duties of the fallen comrades before Leon declares that they need to fulfill their goal for their comrades to rest in peace. In her room, Nagenda mourns Suzanu, acknowledging him as a partner and Tatsumi remembers Mine's dream, vowing to achieve it for her. On the capital streets, Wave and the soldiers try to control a riot caused by civilians and he thinks about the upcoming rebellion, looking for ways to stop it as Run says he joined the Jaegers to change the kingdom's corruption from inside, but Kurom rejects the idea of freedom, while Esdith expresses joy at the fact that Tatsui survived, deciding to go after him once she's done dealing with the rebel army. The Emperor distressingly learns of the oncoming rebellion, but Honest reassures him, blaming the rebels' foolishness. Meanwhile, Kurom's condition worsens, and she decides to settle things with Akam. At a public display of rebel corpses, she discovers a code from Kurom, realizing they must fight. Tatsumi tries to discourage her 
but Akame insists on going alone, making him promise she'll return alive. She meets Kuro in their ruined church, remembering their past as assassins before Kuro angrily blames the kingdom's corruption for Akame's betrayal. They start battling, but are interrupted by a danger beast, so they decide to defeat it first and resume their duel, interrupted by Wave, who intervenes against Akame. Tatsumi convinces him to step aside as Akame stabs Kuro with Murasam killing her. Wave depressingly mourns Kuro's death, questioning what he should fight for, to which Akame declares that only those with determination deserve to use a weapon. She wearily collapses after Wave leaves, and Tatsumi praises her resolve, and they share their determination to move forward without losing loved ones. Back at the palace, Honest shows the Emperor of the Kingdom's Supreme Tegu, preparing to demonstrate its power against the rebels, so the Emperor vows to protect the kingdom using this power. Wave visits Kurom's grave on the outskirts of the capital, remembering how he once looked up to a general in the army, admitting that he feels lost in the rebellion and the corruption in the capital. At Night Raid's hideout, Tatsumi, Akame, and Leon discuss their future after the rebellion before Magenda enters, thanking them for their efforts and revealing Night Raid's final mission to assassinate Prime Minister Honest. The next day, Magenda and the Revolutionary Army launch an attack on the capital as a diversion as Tatsumi, Akame, and Leon aim to infiltrate the palace but get posed by Run so Leon starts battling him, allowing Akame and Tatsumi to head to the Prime Minister. In the throne room, the Emperor questions his rule as the rebellion intensifies before Tatsumi and Akame confront Honest, exposing his manipulation. The Emperor activates the powerful Tegu, Shiko Taser, causing widespread destruction before being challenged by Tatsumi, who criticizes his actions against his own people. He starts fighting the Emperor but gets overwhelmed, so Wave intervenes and swiftly saves him. Leon and Run decide to team up against Shiko Tazer as Tatsumi discovers its weak point, the abdomen, and determinedly delivers a final blow, shattering the colossal Tegu. Despite the victory, Shiko Tazer threatens the civilian, so Tatsumi uses his last strength and manages to prevent the disaster, but starts heavily bleeding from his injuries. Akame rushes towards him as he apologizes for breaking his promise and slowly dies in her arms, fulfilling his commitment to save lives. The Emperor reflects on his defeat, and as Thief approaches Akame and Tatsumi's lifeless bodies. After Tatsumi's death and the Emperor's downfall, as Thief coldly says Tatsumi's death was because of weakness and confusingly thinks about her feelings upon losing him. Revolutionary army members attack her, but she swiftly defeats them as Akame questions what her motives are because of the Empire's defeat. As Thief, looking for victory, threatens to cause more war before Akame vows to end her life. As the two start fighting, Akame brandishes Murasame and infuses herself with its cursed power. As Steve happily welcomes the challenge, but is confused by Akame's strength as her attacks start weakening her. She tries to blind Akame, but she quickly recovers and acknowledges her decreasing strength but lands a critical blow. In a desperate move, as Deef freezes time but is caught off guard by Akame's plan, she slowly accepts defeat and covers herself and Tatsumi in ice before suddenly vanishing while Leon faces and defeats Honest, ending the war. Later, Akame and Leon get separated as Night Raid disbands. The citizens celebrate the revolution's victory, and Akame takes responsibility for the revolutionary army's actions. In a sandstorm, Akame faces a group of Tegu-wielding bandits and says she will continue to walk this path.